Okay, hello and welcome back. So I was flying around with the tactical destroyers for a couple days now, and I have to say they are very decent ships to fly. And of course they come with good things, and of course there are some bad things about these ships, and I will cover both. Now I was specifically using this ship for very difficult missions that I couldn't do with other normal ships, and for that specific purpose this ship was absolutely amazing. And of course, I was flying this ship in PvP that you will see in this video. Now, the appearance of this ship does look like the classic Talvar, with the difference is just the skin. It has a different color pattern, which does look very nice, and I do like it, and it makes this ship distinct and unique. Now, for the attributes, the roll bonus is 25% missile or torpedo velocity, a 7.5% small missile Torpedo damage per skill level, advanced destroyer command bonus per level, min minus 15% minus warp drive signature radius penalty, and a status will be for optimal range bonus. Now I have to say, I would absolutely replace the webifer bonus with a 7.5% weapon range bonus, since after all this should be a sniper, and at the moment this ship doesn't have any major range advantage over the normal Talvar. And the only advantage that this ship does, however, have is when you enter the sniper mode, you will get a 100% bonus on the weapons range, which I'll be covering in a second. Now, the rest of the attributes for this ship are mostly the same, and they do match the original Talvar a lot. So, the only difference between the Talvar and the Talvar sniper is the tactical module. Now, of course, this ship does come with one extra high slot module and it does come with one extra medium slot module and I use the Republic fleet missiles on this ship as the primary weapon. Now these missiles have a decent range 28.98 kilometers which appears to be the, the exact same range that I have on the Talvar. The damage will be slightly higher because compared to the three weapons, uh, compared to the three missiles that I have on the Talvar, there is four of these turrets on the Talvar Sniper. And of course, you have one extra medium slot. Now, you can replace the capacitor battery with, a, with another ballistic control, because the ship does have a stable capacitor. And if you plan to, if you plan to use the ship long distances only, then having two ballistic controls is absolutely better than having the capacitor battery. I like to approach targets with the ship, and of course, I like to snipe them at the same time. Now the rest of the ship stats, as you can see the shield armor and hull are resistances are quite low and this ship is very fragile, so you, you have to be careful. I will be starting with PvE and missions and afterwards I'll be jumping on PvP. Now I did buy the Talvar Sniper specifically for the storyline missions because the storyline missions can be quite dangerous and they can be quite heavy and quite hard and this ship did do quite well. Now I would need a ship that will replace this at some point and I'll, I think that I will be going for a Caracal Navi issue or a Caracal since those ships can have a longer range than the Talvar Sniper. Besides those ships potentially having a long range they also have better DPS and better reload and of course one thing that, that is also very important is those ships have a better tank. Now speaking of tank, this ship, like I mentioned before, is quite fragile and it is very easy to, to destroy. Now to counter that, I think the webifer bonus that this ship has can be replaced with the weapon range bonus, which would suit the snipers a lot better. And this, these ships do only need that 7.5% range bonus on the weapons to make them very very good ships for PV and very efficient snipers. Now, currently, as they are, they are decent. You can use them for these missions. You can also use them for any other mission that you like. But one thing that I do sense and that I did feel that uh, these ships lack is range. And since they are snipers, they should they should not have low range. And I think with the proper rigs, I can make the range of the ship be around 50-70 kilometers without the sniper mode. 
Now, of course, that also depends on the weapons that I want to use. I, w I will probably need the officer weapons to make that range. So, th these ships definitely need a weapon range bonus. And if not given by the sniper mode, then the webifer bonus can be replaced with the range bonus. Because these ships are snipers and these ships shouldn't be going close to to their targets so having a webifer bonus is kind of weird of course you can make these ships to work at close range combat but you're going to have a sniper mode that would be mostly useless in that case and since these ships do have that and since these ships do allow to be used from a very long distance they should have very long range even without the sniper module so it will be very interesting to see what the developers will do about that now overall the dps is nice now it is interesting to note since the sniper mode will increase your cycles of the weapons it will decrease the dps of this ship now without in the normal mode the ship's dps is around 150 but when I turn the sniper mode on, then the DPS will fall to 66. And that's, that's not necessarily bad. It is bad if you want a DPS ship. But you will get a 50% bonus on the weapon damage. And if I were to be honest, I kind of would replace that 50% weapon damage with a 50% faster rate of fire on the weapons since I think that these ships do lack the rate of fire. That's what, that's what happened when I uh, started to fly these ships, that's what I noticed. And these ships would be very decent and very powerful snipers if they had uh, at least a weapon range bonus or if they had a faster rate of fire. Now, I am totally fine with the minus 99% speed reduction that's normal, since after all, snipers should not be moving around at a very rapid pace. But if that's the case, or, or they also can change the damage bonus to be at least 250% damage, and then maybe they would be... And then I could maybe look, uh, look past the very long cycles of the weapons. Since if you can't one-shot your target then you risk at the target reaching you and of course you risk at the target shooting you down because these ships do not take a lot of damage as you will see later I'll be actually making a mistake by accident and I would be approaching one of the targets and then you will see uh, then you can see how much damage this ship can take from these elite cruisers or was it a elite battle cruiser? I, I guess we'll find out since I kind of forgot <laughs> well uh, things will be interesting. Now, in PvP, I do like the performance of this ship in the close quarter combat. If you use this ship like the Talvar, it will do more damage than the Talvar because it's generally it has generally more weapons and it also has dual webs and it has a disruptor. Now, the Talvar will most likely be outperformed by this ship because the ship can shoot from a distance, but most ships can actually escape this, these snipers if you are using the sniper mode in solo 1v1 PvPs, since you aren't going to be able to disrupt them. You, are, you aren't going to be able to disrupt their warp from 57 kilometers, and that might be a problem. Now, in a fleet, it might work. But if you are in a fleet, then you want to have that higher DPS since you want to destroy the target as quickly as possible. One thing though where I see these ships be used is in very specific and very tactical situations. And with the range bonus that these ships can have, they can actually be very dangerous snipers in fleet ops. Especially in citadel attacks or citadel defenses these ships can be very powerful since they can theoretically do a lot damage in a group now the Talar is generally a quick ship and it is generally a ship that's designed for the 
hit and run type of combat since they do not take much damage and they are fast so afterwards in pvp you are going to see a couple examples of how i at least uh, use the ship in pvp and i'll be explaining on the tactics that i use for this ship and for most of the other very for most of the other very fast destroyers and frigates since i do rely a lot on the element of surprise and the first 10 seconds of the battle will be decisive since one mistake on both of the pairs on both of the attacker and both on the one that's been at that's being attacked can be decisive in the outcome of the battle now i didn't do a lot of pvp with this ship my main ship for for that type of combat is the talar and of course it is the Dramiel and the other faction frigates and of course some cruisers but this ship can do a lot of damage in groups and it will be interesting to see what people will come up with this ship now i do think that you can make currently uh, that you can make this ship to have even a longer range i currently need better weapons and i do need better rigs since my rigs are decent but they could be better and i can theoretically put out at least 70 kilometers with this fit that i have just with different rigs that are designed to increase my missile range and i think when these rigs do pop up eventually on the market i will buy them and i will eventually re replace the rigs that i have currently installed on this ship and then it will be interesting to see how this ship will perform and if if it will make a difference in the range since if i were to be 100% honest these snipers do lack range since i did expect these ships to have at least a 80 km range since they are snipers after all i know that some ships in even line do have a base range of 70 kilometers without much skills and without much rigs so I did expect something similar to, uh, to these ships in this game. But of course, since the game is being released not even a month ago, I did expect things like this to happen. And I do expect from the developers to change and of course to balance out the things for these ships and of course for other ships. Well, uh, here you will see the ship getting damaged by one of these elite cruisers or battle cruisers i think it will be a battle cruiser now this is where the range advantage and of course uh, again this is where the range bonus the theoretical range bonus would be of very big value because some of these battle cruisers do have a longer range than i have right now with this ship and if i were to have a 100 kilometer range then i would be safe from their weapons but since we don't have that kind of bonus on this ship i was within their weapons range and they are able to shoot me down so i wouldn't advise to fight those type of battle cruisers because these elite battle cruisers are very dangerous and you should be prepared in these faction storyline missions for anything since they are indeed a very powerful opponent and you need to make sure that you have these elite ships always within your line of sight since they can be very tricky and i did repeat myself because it is very easy to lose ships in these storyline missions and i want to prevent that from happening well uh, there is one of these elite battle cruisers a ferox and just watch my shield it will be funny just keep an eye on my shield there we go that's the first missile hitting my ship and they are using rapid missiles now i immediately uh, was starting to warp out because yeah there we go that's my armor and i did manage to save the ship and i did manage to survive that but i wasn't able to complete the mission because of the short range that i did have with this ship 
So that's one of the things that you should keep in mind. Some of these faction ships do need a specific ship to counter. And I did eventually come back to that mission with a different ship and I did manage to withstand the firepower of that Ferox with a cruiser and that cruiser was a Caracal trainer. But that's, uh, I'll say that for another video, for the Caracal video probably because I do want to show you the things that I did do with the Caracal. It is a very, very nice ship and I do like it a lot. Now for PvP, uh, like I said before, I do rely on element of surprise. It is the greatest weapon that you can have with a Mimitar ship and besides having a very decent speed, this ship does also have very decent DPS outside of the sniper mode and up close you can do some serious damage to cruisers and of course to other ship types. Now this is a tier 6 ship and I usually fight ships up to the tier of the ship that I am flying and that's why you are going to see most of my kills be up to tier 6. Of course that doesn't mean that I am not shooting tier 7s, tier 8s and faction ships. It's just that I have to be very careful when I engage faction ships since they can be very dangerous and faction ships and tier 7 ships are generally a lot stronger than the tier 6 and especially the faction ships. The faction frigates are very dangerous and it is not advised to engage them with a tier 6 destroyer since those frigates do have a small signature radius. They are very fast and they have very high DPS and of course they also have other traits that make them very dangerous. Now. Since I look at the tactical destroyer, since it is a tier 6 ship, I do look at them like it. Uh, I do look at the ship like I do look on a Talvar because they are mostly they mostly work the same when they are fighting up close. Uh, they are both fragile and they are both easy targets, and these ships work best in a fleet. Now, fleet size also matters. I do prefer small fleets since they are very fun. And this ship can work really well in the smaller fleets. Now, having a couple of these ships in a fleet is going to be interesting since I do get around 1.5 to 2.5k damage per salvo, which is quite which is quite nice. And if you have at least 10 of these ships shooting at the target, and if each of these ships does 2.5k damage then that's 25,000 damage per salvo each 12 seconds and of course if you if they use ballistic controls you can make the cycle of the weapons even lower and having the 10 of these ships in a fleet is going to be interesting and I am looking forward for uh, any fleet that will have these ships just to test out my theory in of course in actual combat since until I test something it is a theory and when I actually get a fleet with 10 of these ships it will be very interesting. Now I did look at the other, uh, other destroyers, other sniper destroyers and I didn't quite like most of them. I did like the Talar because it does have the micro warp drive penalty, penalty reduction and it does help at lowering the incoming damage, if there is any of course, and of course it keeps the ship uh, running very fast for a very long time. Now all of these targets that you can see here is, they're mostly caught by surprise. Some of them were ready, some of them did warp out, and I think I even did manage to catch a prototype ship, which might be a expensive kill. In the end uh, I also did make a couple mistakes. I mean, my mistakes are mostly because uh, I did rush things a lot, since it is mostly the first time that I fly a tactical destroyer in this game, so I am still kind of learning how to control the ship and I'm learning how to use the sniper module. And this is where I came to the conclusion that the sniper module in a solo in solo PvP is quite is not going to be useful in a lot of situations. 
Now it is going to be useful if you are warping in and the target is far away and if the target is at low uh, low hull or low armor then you can take the then you can launch the missiles and then you can theoretically one shot the target of course with a ballistic control and uh, being within the range of the targets but if you are shooting at a, a target that has full shield full armor and full hull at a long range then they have all they, they then they can just warp out uh, you cannot use the um, disruptor above 20 kilometers and these snipers are also no exception since the disruptor doesn't get the range bonus with uh, the sniper module now that doesn't mean that the sniper module is completely useless like i said you can use it to snipe a single target that is on low hull from a distance and the missiles are going to have a very decent speed boost which i do like a lot and in that case it works but in, in a uh, full 1v1 then it's not going to work then you can use the ship like the Talvar and orbit at 20 kilometers with micro warp drive on and of course with the missiles locked on your target and so i have to admit i did have fun flying this ship it is indeed unique and i do like the snipers they will be i think i really hope that they will be reworked in the future since these ships have unused potential they can be very important assets in fleets and these ships might potentially be one of the most used ships in long-range combat because they are not that expensive only 25 million isk and they're also quite fast and with the proper bonuses they can also have very long range which these ships should have since they are after all snipers and i'll be I, i'll be really hoping that these ships get reworked since i did have fun flying them and they are overall very decent ships for all of the games content well with that being said i hope that you enjoyed it's a pleasure to play this game for you and well when i return next time uh, i think i'll be trying to i think i'll be returning with a caracal <laughs> i'm not quite sure since i have to get uh, other ships and uh, and also i have to get items for these other ships well with that being said stay safe fly safe and i'll see you next time take care